And so I'm going to turn it over to, to Brother Fred. Uh, but as we get into this message, I want you to be thinking about what are some things that have happened in your life that you want justice for, that you want recompense for. I know we've had suicides in our family. We've had uh, sicknesses and, and, and things that have uh, come upon uh, us personally. And we've already been uh, activating, if you will, uh, this message tonight. And so I'm going to turn it over okay. to Brother Fred. Uh, the short title for the message today is Warring for Justice. Um, if you look at what justice is, there is a law system <clears throat> or a system of laws, but those system of laws have to be enforced. And that's why you have justice is to enforce the law. And uh, if the law, <clears throat> excuse me, if the law is not enforced, then evil runs rampant in the land. And so uh, we have to in, enforce justice. And God has a, a kingdom, and in his kingdom, there are laws and principles. And when those are violated, uh, we have to bring back justice. And so to enforce it and to limit uh, evil. And so this is a really important message. Mm -hmm. uh, we have all suffered injustices and we are the ones with responsibility for taking the injustices before the judge of all, our heavenly father, and ask for justice. Now the justice is not just to stop things, but it's also for damages to pay for damages that have mm -hmm. uh, happened. Uh, for example, Sherry was in an automobile accident one time. She was just going down the road, uh, had a green light, was moving, and the car came out in front of her. And uh, so they had that, uh, an accident and she was uh, hurt. Her body was hurt. A uh, car was destroyed. Um, but, you know, the people that did that, they didn't volunteer anything. They right. didn't say, oh, hey, here, uh, here's a bunch of money to pay you. Uh, not only to repair your car, but also for the damages that you've suffered. So we had to get a judge. I mean, to get a lawyer, a lawyer. and go before a judge. Yeah. And uh, in that way, we were able to make our case uh, before a judge and uh, receive uh, compensation, not only for uh, the damages of the car, but also uh, for bodily injury. And it's the same thing in the kingdom of God. Uh, the uh, there are all kinds of injustices that happen, and particularly those that uh, go back to the devil, whether it's indirectly or directly uh, sponsored by the devil, that he brings evil, and either uh, by himself by putting evil, uh, sickness or disease or or whatever, or operating through people by provoking people to do things to injure you. All of those can be injuries mm -hmm. and harm and damage to you. Mm -hmm. And not only do we want it stopped, we also want it undone. And mm -hmm. uh, Jesus came to undo what the devil did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, uh, but it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to bring it. To fight. To, uh, to fight for it, to bring it before the judge and receive a verdict of what is the sentence in this case, and then we can execute the justice and judgment on the head of the enemy. And so we have a big role in this particular process, and this is what's needed to stop the evil from running rampant in the land. We have to stand up for what's right. And uh, the two words, righteousness and uh, uh, justice go hand in hand. We'll see them throughout the Bible. And the people who are righteous can have the right. They have the right to ask for justice. And, and so if you're not right with God, uh, then your request for justice is not going to carry the weight of someone who is right with God, upright with God. Mm -hmm. And and so we're going to be talking about these things then. And I want to start with a couple of verses, one in uh, Psalm 97 too, and we'll see that God's throne 
uh, is established on righteousness and justice. So I'll read this first. Please. Psalms 97 verse 2. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Okay, so if God doesn't give you justice, doesn't give justice to his people, then, then his throne, then God's throne will topple. It, it He is a God of justice. His name is a God of justice. Amen. And so we have to realize that he wants to give justice. And then this Psalm 103, verse 6. Here, you read that. This please. is out of the Amplified Bible. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you see yourself as the oppressed, but yeah. I do. Hey, I'm chief among the yeah. oppressed. Uh -huh. I have uh, I had many injustices against me personally, against mm -hmm. my family, against uh, uh, members of my family, uh, the, in particular. And things I've been t thinking about today, many uh, people were killed at an early age in my family. Mm -hmm. My mother, my brother, my uh, three nephews uh, at an early, early age and brother. Uh, and, and so just many, many things. Those were injustices. And, and you know who comes to steal, kill and destroy? And destroy? Jesus is the thief. Well, but, the, but the thief is the devil. He comes to steal. So if you have people who have been uh, killed in your uh, family, uh, then you've been robbed. Now, let me tell you, you've been robbed yeah, of yeah. their relationships, of their uh, uh, importation into your life, into uh, inheritance. And I'm not just talking about money here. I'm, ta I'm just talking about life. You've just been robbed of life's experiences and, and, and relationships. relationships. You've been robbed of those things. If, if the devil has killed uh, some of your uh, family members, and, I, and I've lost many, many family members. And I'm not even talking about friends here. I'm just looking at mm -hmm. my family members mm -hmm. that have been killed by the devil at an early, early age. A 17-year-old killed in an automobile accident, for example, by uh, a man that just was released from the a mental institution. He was crazy. He was uh, driven by demons, and he ran through uh, a stop sign and kill my nephew. Just as an example, oh, I've lost that. I lost that uh, that nephew that I should have had a relationship with. And so all of those things. And so uh, there are many, many different ways, but I'm just giving you some some examples. And, and so what we see here in Psalm 103 verse 6 is that God gives justice to the oppressed. And that's me and that's you. We have been oppressed by the devil. And, and uh, but just let's just clarify that the oppressor is the devil. And that's, yes, I mean. Uh, I won't read these two verses, but Acts 10 38 says uh, Jesus healed those who were oppressed of the devil. So the devil is the oppressor. We also see in Luke uh, uh, 13, verse 16, that there was a woman bent over for 18 years. And, and Jesus said mm -hmm. it was the devil mm -hmm. that held her hurt. in bondage. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, the devil did that. Right. So the devil is the oppressor and God gives justice to all who have, have been, been oppressed. oppressed. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. I want you to know that there you're do some things uh, that there have been injustices against you and your loved ones, and you are due some damages uh, that uh, existed from that. Now, let's think about how does Jesus, how does God deal with the justices? Well, of course, he said Jesus, mm -hmm. and that's good. Let's look at First uh, John 3, 8, which uh, is one of our favorite verses amen, here. Amen. And uh, we're going to read it out of the Passion Translation. Read that, please. The reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and to destroy the works of the devil. Not just Hallelujah. destroy, but undo the effects of what he did. Amen. See, that's where justice comes in. Uh uh, that's where justice comes in because it's more than just stopping it. Mm -hmm. It's undoing what effect there has been there. And to get recompense for those un injustices. Because God comes to give punish, to punish 
Hallelujah. Oh, he hallelujah. punishes hallelujah. unrighteousness, disobedience. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. I, lo I love Jesus. <laughs> and he came to undo and Amen. destroy the works of the devil. Now, let this. I'm getting down to Revelation 19, 11, And this is really the core uh, verse for this whole message. It, it really sums it up and says it uh, in a succinct way. I want Sherry to read it, and then I'll comment it. Revelation 19, 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and wages war. Okay. Love it. I want to just comment on this verse here. It's so important. With justice. Uh, some translations say with righteousness, but righteousness and justice go hand in hand. Those who are righteous can bring justice. They Hallelujah. have the right to bring justice. So I chose the verse that said, with justice, he w judges, judges and wages war. Now, the reason this is so important to me is I know there are many people that intercede and they really intercede for things and uh, but they don't take time for the justice. Mm -hmm. They don't take time to go to the judge. Mm -hmm. But see, this is our model. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is our model. He's the one we follow. And with justice, he judges first mm -hmm. and makes war second. So don't intercede. You know, don't, don't make war through intercessory war through without going through the judge through the judicial system because you want to find out what the sentence is on the enemy. Mm, hallelujah. So it's really important to first find out what's the sentence that needs to be executed on the head of the enemy. And then you are. That's the way Jesus did it. He didn't get them mixed up. He didn't get them out of order. He always was orderly. He always did that with justice. He judged and made war. Mm -hmm. See, so, so many times I've seen people just uh, pray and pray and pray and intercede and intercede like a like a machine gun, but they never took time to find out how to pray. They never took mm -hmm. time uh, to go before the Lord and see what the Holy Spirit was saying. See, there's a verse in Romans 8, I believe it's verse 26, that says you don't know how to pray. That's right. You don't know how to pray. Now, that, that verse may not affect you, but that verse affected me. When mm -hmm. I read that, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray. Well, right. we think we know how to pray because we look at things. We, we decide how we're going to pray. But, but in reality, we don't know how to pray. The only way you can find out how to pray is to go to the judge. Hallelujah. Find out what he says to pray. What's the Holy Spirit leading you? What is the Holy Spirit leading you to do? Glory to God. So you, you can't just run headlong into a situation and pray, 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 pray if you don't know how to pray. Now, that's ridiculous. Let's get uh, boots on the ground. Let's get some wisdom with Hallelujah. this so that we are defeating uh, and destroying and undoing the works of the Devil. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I hope I've made that, that clear. It's important for us to find out how we're supposed how to pray. How to pray. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And when when the Bible says we don't know how to pray, let's let's take that for real. That's real. We don't know how to pray. So we've got we've got to get the Holy Spirit involved. We have to have wisdom from above. And so let's go before the judge of all and find out how we're supposed to pray. Well, when we understand, um, when we understand how justice works, there are, it's more than just getting something stopped. And, uh, and I, let's say, just give a, a simple example. Let's say, that a person has been out of work because they're sick. They were sick a day and they took a day off and they uh, went to the doctor and got some medicine. Okay. And so they, uh, let's say on the way to the doctor or the hospital, they're, 
they're, they call somebody and ask uh, someone to pray for them. Oh, pray for me. I'm sick. I'm on my way to the doctor. I'm going to get some medicine. Okay. So if it, it seems like in that situation, all that person wanted to do was to resolve the problem, to stop to stop the problem. To stop the problem. To fix the problem. Now, if you're just asking for prayer, if you're at, if you're calling people and asking them to pray, and the devil's uh, attacking you, and you're just asking them to pray, uh, then all you're doing, you're you're just wanting the problem to go away. You're wanting the problem to be resolved. Well, what should you be standing up and wanting? You should be wanting justice, Hallelujah. because justice would cover not only the day of uh, work missed, uh, that's a that's a penalty that you have to pay, bear, so it's the cost of being sick. You have to pay for the doctor, you have to pay for the visit with the doctor, mm, you have to pay for medication, you have to pay for all those things. So, so if all we do is just stop the sickness and we're healed, uh, then that's not justice. See, justice is going to get back uh, it's going to restore to you what, what you've lost and bring penalties because God's going to punish uh, the devil uh, for the things that he brings against you if you stand up and ask for justice. But justice does not come for you to you if you do not fight for it. That's you have right. to fight for justice in order to That's receive right. justice. Otherwise, you don't get justice. There's a lot of people who have received damages and injustice from the devil, but they aren't standing up for it. They, they may just be asking They're not for, fighting for it. They're not fighting. We're talking about a fight. And, and the title of the message today, short title is War for Justice. And you've got to stand up and, and you've got, now in God's system, in the kingdom, uh, there, there is a system of laws and, and it's a higher level. And so what we're really talking about today is to take all of us to a higher level than we've been before. We need to realize that when the devil brings injury against us, we can get not only to stop what he's done, but undo the effects and penalize. Uh, and let me give you an example, uh, a personal example. And this is something God taught us years ago. Um, we took our, our car to a mechanic uh, to have a, a part replaced and there was a compressor on a, an air conditioner and he asked me if I wanted a rebuilt condenser, a uh, compressor or a new one. I, he said a new one's more expensive. I said I want the new one. I, I didn't want something that broke at one point in time, I thought it might break again. So I said, I want a new part and I'm willing to pay the higher price. Well, he fixed it. He brought it home and I opened up the hood when we got it to the house and it had a big sticker on it, rebuilt part. <laughs> but I paid for a new part and I got a rebuilt part. So mm -hmm. I, I said, uh, and, and Sherry and I were talking about it. I said, well, we've been uh, defrauded here. We've We've, we've been robbed. We've been robbed of three hundred dollars uh, that we should not have paid, and and so we brought this case before the Lord. Uh, and now this was not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, and spiritual and spirit rulers in the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in the uh, heavenly place. places. And, and so th this is not about flesh and blood. And so I didn't go there with a hammer in my head, hand back to the a mechanic and beat him over the head because uh, he had uh, uh, charged me the wrong uh, amount. Yeah. I went to heaven. I, I went to God. And, and what was interesting, in, in a few days, uh, from another nation, another nation, a man called me and, and wanted me to do something for him. And I, I said I was willing to do it. And it, it was a simple uh, task he asked me to do. And uh, he was going to send me a check. And uh, so I did what I was supposed to. I, mailed, I put it in the mail. He sent me a uh, check. And, but before the check got here, uh, the Holy Spirit said to me, that check that's coming for $2,100 is sevenfold return. Seven, is the sevenfold return that you asked for. See, we asked for a sevenfold mm -hmm. return. Sevenfold return. And he, now, if, 
if it had happened the next day and uh, $2,100 had been there, then I would have connected it. But it was, a, it was several days before mm -hmm. it happened. And, and it, I actually had to do a little task. The, the task was minor. I could have done it on the back of an envelope uh, because I'm a university uh, professor researcher at the time. And there was something I could do that he couldn't do. And I did it for him. It was a very simple task. So a lot of people are, are just thinking, well, uh, I just want money to drop out of heaven, but that's not the way it works. Sometimes you have to do things to get things to work. And, and that's what happened in that case. But it, And I wouldn't have connected the two dots, but the dots were, we lost $300. We asked for a sevenfold return. A man called me from another nation and asked me to do some calculations and he was sending me a check and he came up with a figure. I didn't come up with it. I, I, didn't, I didn't try to... Uh, make something happen. He, he said, this is what I'm willing to pay you for it. I said, okay. And I didn't think anything about it, but it was the Holy Spirit said that $2,100 is your seven sevenfold fold return. Seven fold return. So this is a lesson we learned years ago that you can get justice. Mm -hmm. You can get it. See, see, it wasn't just the 300. I, I wasn't satisfied just to get the 300 back. I wanted the seven fold return. I'll show it to you out of the out of the scriptures yeah. in a moment, uh, but there is restoration uh, in uh, in justice. Uh, mm -hmm. But not only that, there is a supernatural power released, a supernatural mm -hmm. power released mm -hmm. uh, when you're asking for justice. And a really good example, and then oh, you look at this yeah. prayer in Acts chapter four, and and let me just give you this uh, the example here of uh, the disciples. Uh, see, in Acts chapter 3, they saw a lame man, and and they used the name of Jesus, and he was healed, and he went into the temple uh, jumping and leaping and dancing, and and uh, the, the Pharisees and, and uh, the religious leaders, of course, got upset at that, uh, using the name of Jesus to heal. They just didn't want it, and, and they threatened Peter and John, yeah, you're, you're familiar with this story, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying it quickly. Uh, they threatened them and told them not to use the name of Jesus anymore. So when they were, were released uh, out of the jail, then and they went back to the other disciples. And you know what they prayed for? They prayed for justice. They prayed for mm -hmm. justice. They, they may not have used words, uh, the word justice in it, but you can see it in the prayer that they prayed. And so if you want justice, you look at this prayer that they pray and, and you might say, well, this is kind of a different um, subject for just a second. Then we'll come back to the prayer. And maybe you want to move in the gifts. Well, one of the reasons you may not be moving in the gifts is because you haven't asked for justice because justice see, releases supernatural power, mm. even to the point where there are signs and wonders. Oh, we'll see it yeah, here in there. Yeah. In there prayer and we'll just look at the three verses here. I ask Sherry to read these. Acts chapter 4. Verses 29 through 31. And now Lord, look at their threats and grant it to your bond servants to speak your word with all confidence while you extend your hand to heal and show signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about supernatural power. When you ask for justice, then you get heaven involved. You get God working with you in partnership. He, that's where the power is released is when you're asking for justice and you get in line with his plans and what he wants, then he releases that supernatural power. And that's, they were praying for signs and wonders for that supernatural power to be released. And it was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I want to make a reference to another man who uh, prayed for uh, justice. And that was uh, King Solomon. And this is First Kings 3. We won't read the whole uh, passage, but... Uh, he prayed, and even in the night, he, uh, uh, God asked him what he wanted, and, and uh, did he want a long life or riches or whatever it was, but no, he asked for um, discernment 
in administering justice. That's what the new mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he asked for justice. Right. He wanted discernment for administering justice. I just asked Sherry to read this one first verse out of the uh, three, out of First Kings 3. So God said to him, Solomon, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you wisdom and discerning heart so that there will never be, as never have been anyone like you, nor will ever will ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for. I'm going to give you wealth and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, see what all he got? He was just asking for justice so that he could administer Mr. Justice. justice. And he got wealth. He got riches. He got long life. Uh, but see, here's another point that God made in this uh, response to Solomon. Uh, he said, you didn't ask for the head of your rulers, uh, of the of your, of your enemies. enemies. He, you didn't ask for them. Okay, now that's really important because that would have made him the judge. If he said, I want you to kill all my enemies, then that would have made him judge. But he, we're not judge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, no. God is the judge. He's the judge of all. And, and so we've got to realize our point. That's re- or, or our, our position. position. We have to realize our position. We're not the judge. He's the judge. We go there and ask. We go there and ask, and he gives us justice. We ask for justice. I've given you two prayers right there, and you can look at them and study them and meditate on them, and the Holy Spirit will show you how to pray to receive justice for whatever situation that you have been injured, that you have injustice uh, that you've ex- that you've experienced in your life. So the first thing that we see then is that there's supernatural supernatural power released when we're asking for justice, and that's how faith and power come together, mm-hmm. so that we can war for justice. See, you've got to have that supernatural power. Not only faith, not mm-hmm. only faith within you. Mm-hmm. The faith is within you, and that comes from hearing the word of God. Mm-hmm. But then you also have to have that connect with the supernatural power that God has so that you can be effective. And and that's when the signs and wonders uh, occur. And that's when they'll occur in your life. When you begin to stand up. Amen, amen. When you begin to stand up. Up in war. And war for justice. Now, the second point I wanna make, the first one was supernatural power. The second one is restoration. There is promised restoration Mm -hmm. when you ask for justice when you get justice that's right restoration so it's not just to stop an evil but it's to get restoration just like i got sevenfold return i got twenty one hundred dollars a man from another nation called Mm -hmm. me and offered me twenty one hundred dollars and god said that's your sevenfold return okay so i want to well and and brother fred tried to get in touch with this man later to to thank him and 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 he never could it was like he never existed there was no answer he, he, he on the could phone. not find him and i don't know whether he's an angel or a man <laughs> or what but we got money we got the money the check worked the check didn't the check, yeah the check didn't bounce it, it worked hallelujah. hallelujah okay so but the second point is restoration and here we could see that in the bible we talk about different levels of restoration you can have a, a two-fold return a four-fold mm-hmm. fold return, a, five. a five-fold return, or even a seven-fold return. Mm-hmm. Let's just read these two verses in uh, Exodus 22 and then in Proverbs six. 6. Exodus 22, verse 1. If someone steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he shall pay five oxen for the ox and four sheep for the sheep. Proverbs six thirty one. When a thief is caught... Oh, here's an important point. He must repay seven times as much. He must give up all the property of his house. Hallelujah. Sevenfold return. Do you want a twofold return, fourfold, fivefold, or sevenfold? See, I won't go for the most. I want the max. <laughs> I want sevenfold. And, and see, but it's God that determines. It's Amen. God that determines. But if you're in right standing with God, then go to the 
before him and ask for justice in whatever situation you've experienced. Here, do you want to say something? Well, I was just going to say that some of you have had uh, physical uh, situations in your body. And recently I have uh, gone before the judge and asked for justice and a restoration of a sevenfold restoration of what the enemy tried to kill me with cancer. Uh, and and I believe that that has already started to return unto me. And uh, and so that's why I was saying that we, what we're teaching tonight, we have already uh, stepped into and began to activate uh, in our own lives. Yeah, but, but these are principles God's been teaching to us for years and years. And it's important for us to walk in when God wants us to move to a higher level, all of us, a higher level. This is not mm -hmm. what we've been teaching in recent times. This is going to a higher level. You've got to fight for justice, not just for your healing, but a sevenfold return. Um, but God is the judge, and you've got to go before him and ask for that judgment. Now, the other thing I want to point, and, and this is, I'm bringing this to a, a closure, and that is, God's waiting for you. He is the God of justice. Mm -hmm. He wants to give you justice, but you've got to do some things in order to receive it. So let's look at Isaiah 30, verse 18. Therefore, the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on high to have compassion upon you. For the Lord is a God of justice. How blessed are those who long for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's waiting. He is the God of justice. And this is where his name comes from. He's Elohim Mispa. And that means the God of justice. It's right here in this verse. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's waiting for us. There are things that we have to do. There are things that we have to do. Mm -hmm. See, uh, uh, you know, their government sometimes uh, uh, give a grant, uh, give justice to people who but they have to fill out the paperwork. They have to be sure that they are eligible. And it's the same thing in the supernatural realm. But we're not warring against men and women or flesh and bone, mm -hmm. but, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we have to remember that. But there are things that we have to do. Remember this from uh, Psalm 24, and that uh, who's going to go to the house of, and to the mountain of God? It's it. those with a... Uh, pure heart pure heart and clean, clean hands, hands clean hands and pure heart and, and then uh, i want to end with this last verse uh second uh, corinthians 10 6 and god's ready to bring punishment to the devil uh, for what he's done to you but there's a condition let's read it here okay and we are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is complete okay so what, what did i start with i talked about righteousness and justice and they go to hand in hand when we're righteous when we're we're upright and in right standing with god then we can uh ask for justice but see if we've stolen money and then somebody steals money from us and we go before the judge and we won't uh uh, we want the uh, restoration of what was stolen from us. Well, the, the judgment comes forth for all those who have stolen. And, and so we we can't steal and, and then uh, expect restoration. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be in right standing with God. And those are the people who have the right uh, to bring forth justice. Now, I hope that I have brought this message mm -hmm. uh, forth clearly to you. This is a message that if you catch hold of yes, it, yes. it will take you to a higher Our level, level that you're not just satisfied to get a healing, but that you want justice. When the devil brings a sickness to you or injury or uh, something to you or your family, you want to stand up and battle for justice, not just for the uh, stuff to stop, for the devil to stop, but for justice so that you get uh Re reimbursed or recompensed yes. uh, rewarded for that you get something back for the damages 
That's where the justice That's is. Right. If you're satisfied just to have people pray for you uh, so that you won't be sick anymore, then you're not standing for justice. Uh, to stand for justice, you have to go before the judge. You can't uh, say, oh, Sister Sherry, go before the judge for me. Oh, no, that's not it. And, and don't just call her and say, oh, Sister Sherry, pray for me. Uh, well, that You're not standing for justice. You go before the judge, present the case, and, and, and show the verses, and say, this, this is what the devil has done to us. This is what has happened in my family. I want sevenfold return or twofold, whatever you want. Want justice. Desire justice and realize it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And when we all stand up and ask for justice, not just to stop the devil, but justice, true justice, then we're going to limit the evil in the land. 